question more. Go behind the Iron Curtain USA. Oh, this, this is wonderful. It's wonderful to be among friends with our, my family and for a good reason, to promote the cause of liberty in a revolutionary spirit. Thank you very much for being here. I, I have to tell you, though, I was pretty worried the early part of this week. I saw a couple of bad articles. I saw it wasn't the hurricane that I was worried about. But I saw that it said, revolution is over. There's going to be no revolution. Major paper in Washington, D.C. They said, the revolution will not be happening. Don't they only wish. <laughs> But, but it, is, it is so great to come together for something so important. You know, a lot of people say today is a very important day, and I think it is. Our events today, to me, very important. And they say that this uh, convention is very important this week, and indeed it is. And this uh, election is very important. But let me tell you, there's something even more important than all of that, and that is the cause that we're leading and the cause of liberty, the ascension that we're getting right now. There's, there's been a lot of talk about uh, whether or not I would get to speak at the convention. And of course, I've uh, written that off. But today, I was very excited. I got a call, a call from the RNC. And they said they changed their mind. And, and they're going to give me a whole hour. I can say anything I want. Tomorrow night. It takes a lot of hard work, and uh, you, you knew the rules better than they thought they knew the rules. But, you know, that didn't stop them. They've learned how to bend rules, break rules, and now they want to rewrite the rules. But then again, maybe they've been paying attention to what's been going on in Washington. They've been bending the rules and breaking the rules and rewriting the rules for too long. That's what we have to stop from happening. coming about. It's coming about. Not so much, not only because I believe we're right on the issues, but what is coming out right now is proof positive that their philosophy of government, whether it's foreign policy, monetary policy, or economic policy, is failing and they need something different. Adams about an irate Tyler's minority and uh, bringing about changes in that way. But ultimately, that minority is irate and tireless, and, and they, uh, you know, light the fires of liberty in the minds of men. Yes, that's important, but ultimately, numbers do count. And even numbers do count when they don't count all the votes as well, because we do have the numbers. But those who, those who promote ideas ultimately have to have an influence on the prevailing attitudes of the people. And that is what's happening today. The people now are waking up and they're realizing the failure of what we have and the reason that these ideas are coming about. Now in this primary, we had close to 2 million votes. They said, oh yeah, there's 2 million, two million votes. That doesn't swing an election, da da da. You know, uh, it's no big deal, but guess what? For every vote that we got, in the primary, let me tell you, just from my personal experience of traveling around the country and meeting people at airports and wherever, the support out there is much, much greater and they don't feel comfortable coming to a Republican primary. So the support there, I would say, be two or three times as much as the number of votes we got in the primary.
The subject of monetary policy, of course, comes up frequently in Washington uh, on our committee, but off and on over quite a few years. And the question has always been, what are we going to do, the pen, do with the penny? You know, they want to change it to steel, uh, but they can't even afford to steal. If you have a steel penny instead, we can't, we're off the gold, we're off the silver, we're off the copper standard, now we're on the zinc standard, we're off the, we can't even afford a zinc penny, so then now they want to make them out of steel, but the steel, by the time you pay for labor, it costs more than a penny to make a steel penny. So there was an article, a headline came out that they, the other day, it said, uh, will, can we save the penny? And I got to thinking, well, they don't understand monetary policy or they wouldn't be talking that way. The bigger question that we will be forced to face is can we save the dollar? There was a bill passed not too long ago, and as you could guess, I voted against it, and that's that Dodd-Frank bill. Did you ever hear of that monster? In that bill, they gave more power to the Federal Reserve. It's, uh, they created a board, a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, to protect, the, protect all the consumers. So they were given a task here a couple of months ago, and it was designed to make things more efficient. That's why this story will tell you why efficiency is not the answer to our problems. We don't want more efficient government. We want to get the government out of the business that they're not supposed to be doing. But they, this new Consumer Financial Protection Board was given the task of simplifying the applications for a mortgage loan because it's complex and now they're more complex because they had a bubble and they don't know where the bubble came from because it was probably it was probably because they didn't fill out enough forms so they said what we need to do is simplify these forms so they went to work and indeed they came up with the solution they provided the solution it was one thousand pages long on how to reduce two forms to one form all these new regulations placed on uh, everybody who applies for a bill, and they think that's that is is the uh, is, that will be the solution, but uh, that isn't the solution. The solution is get the government out of our lives and off our back and out of our wallets. going to be talking about balancing the federal budget now. Now! If we don't balance the federal budget now, we're going to find ourselves in a monetary collapse. And a monetary collapse, very simply, is when the dollars that we have in our pocket don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that is going to go along with that. And that means addressing the entitlements. Right now you've got Republicans and Democrats saying they're going to spend more on Medicare than the other party. We have to reform Medicare. We have to spend less money on Medicare. We have to spend less money on the military. I'm going to be proposing 43% reductions in those categories because if we don't do it, we're going to find ourselves without a country. Country. Both parties have their hands out to sell people, and guess what? Individuals, groups, corporations are buying those loopholes. I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to abolish the IRS. Eliminate... to zero taxes. I am the only candidate that would sign legislation to abolish the Federal Reserve. It's a rigged game! It's a rigged game! The Federal Reserve gives money to the banks for zero percent. The Fed loans money, gives money to the banks. The banks buy treasuries, profiting off you and I with no risk whatsoever. This is not what this country
country is about. I'm the only candidate that would, that would repeal legal tender laws and sign legislation allowing for competing currencies. Go behind.